Hi guys, hope you're doing well. I miss seeing all of you every day and all of the fun that we had at school, but I hope that you are making the most out of your break and enjoying the time with your families and getting to spend some time outdoors. I wanted to do a read aloud on YouTube so we could continue with our daily school routine and get some reading in. So I'm going to be reading this book, which is called How to Steal a Dog by Barbara O'Connor. Hopefully this is a new book for most of you, but if it isn't a new book, it still would be beneficial to listen along because you might um, learn some new stuff or catch some information you didn't the first time. So I'm going to read a few chapters every day and then upload them here for you guys to watch them. So, How to Steal a Dog. The day I decided to steal a dog was the same day my best friend, Luann Godfrey, found out that I lived in a car. I had told Mama she would find out sooner or later, seeing as how she's so nosy and all. But Mama had rolled her eyes and said, Just get up on there to the bus stop, Georgina, and quit your whining. So that's what I did. I stood up there at the bus stop, pretending like I still lived in apartment 3B. I pretended like I didn't have mustard on my shirt from the day before. I pretended I hadn't washed my hair in the bathroom of the Texaco gas station that very morning. And I pretended like my daddy hadn't just waltzed off and left us with nothing but three rolls of quarters and a mayonnaise jar full of wadded up dollar bills. I guess I'm good, I guess I'm good at pretending. My brother, Toby, however, is not so good at pretending. When Mama told him to get up on the bus stop and quit his whining, he cried and carried on like the baby that he is. What's wrong with Toby? Luann asked me when we were standing at the bus stop. He has an earache, I said, trying as hard as anything to look like my life was just as normal as it could be, instead of all the craziness that it really was. When I saw Luann's eyes narrow and her lips squeeze together, I knew her nosiness was about to irritate me. Soon enough, she said, then how come your mama is making him go to school? She kept looking at me with that squinty-eyed look of hers, but I didn't let on that I was irritated. I just shrugged and hoped she would hush about Toby. She did. But then she went and turned her nosy self loose on me. No offense, Georgina, she said, but you're starting to look kind of unkept. Unkept? That was her mama talking if I've ever heard it. Luann wouldn't have never said that word unkempt if she hadn't heard my, her mama say it first. And what was I supposed to say to that anyways? Was I supposed to say, well, you're, for your information, Luann, it's kind of hard to keep your clothes looking nice when you've been sleeping in the backseat of a Chevrolet for a week? Or maybe I was supposed to say, I know, Luann, but my hairbrush got tossed in that pile of stuff Mr. Dieter left on the sidewalk when he kicked us out of our apartment. And then Luann would say, Why'd Mr. Dieter do that? And I would say, because three rolls of quarters and a mayonnaise jar full of wadded up dollar bills doesn't pay the rent, Luann. But I didn't say anything. I just acted like I hadn't heard that word unkempt. I just climbed on the bus and sat in the sixth seat on the left side with Luann, like I always did. I knew Luann wouldn't give up, though. I knew she'd keep until she found the truth. What if she wants to come over, I said to Mama. Or what if she looks in the window and, or something and finds out we don't live in there anymore? But Mama just flapped her hand at me and closed her eyes to let me know how tired she was from working two jobs. So every day, I imagined Luann peeking in the kitchen window of apartment 3B. When she did, of course, she wouldn't see me and Toby and Mama and Daddy eating our dinner and being happy. She'd see some other family, some happy family that wasn't all broken up like mine. And then one day, when we got off the school bus... Luann went and did the nosiest thing I could imagine. She followed me. I was trying to catch up with Toby because he'd grab the car key and run on ahead of me, so I didn't even notice her sneaking along behind me. She followed me all the way past apartment 3B across the street and clear on around the back of Eckerd Drugstore, where our car was parked with the laundry hanging out the windows and Toby sitting on a milk crate waiting for me. If there was ever a time when I'd wish the earth would open up and swallow me whole, it was when I turned around and saw Luann looking at me and Toby and the car and all. I could see her thoughts just as plain as day right there on her face. I wanted to wave my hand and make that dented up car disappear off the face of earth. 
but more than anything, I wanted my daddy to come on home and change everything back to the way it was before. I set a smile on my face and said, it's just temporary, like mama had said to me about a hundred times. Luann turned red and said, oh. When mama gets paid, we're moving into our new apartment, I said, oh. And then we just stood there, looking at our feet. I could feel the distance between us grow and grow until it seemed like Luann Godfrey, who had been my friend forever, was standing clear on the other side of the universe from me. Finally, she said, I better go, but she didn't. She just stood there and I squeezed my eyes shut and told myself not to look pitiful and for heaven's sake, don't cry. And then, of course, Toby had to go and make everything worse by saying, Mama left a note that she's working late, so we're supposed to eat that macaroni that's in the cooler. Luann arched her eyebrows up and then said, I haven't seen your daddy in a long time. That did it. I couldn't stop the tears from spilling out of my squeezed up eyes. I sat down right there in the drugstore parking lot and told Luann everything. I felt her arm around me and I heard her saying something, but I was too lost in my misery to do anything but cry. When I was all cried out, I stood up and brushed the dirt off the seat of my pants, pushed the hair out of my eyes and said, promise you won't tell? Luann nodded. I promise. I mean, not even your mama? Luann's eyes flickered for just a second and then she said, okay. I crooked my pinky finger in the air and waited for her to give me the pinky promise, but she hesitated. I stamped my foot and jabbed my pinky at her. Finally, she crooked her pinky around mine and we shook. I better go, she said. I watched her hurry across the parking lot and then glance back at me before disappearing around the corner of the drugstore. I hate that macaroni, Toby said from his seat on the milk crate. It was just like him to not even give me one little minute to wallow in my misery. I stomped around to the back of the car and kicked the cooler, sending it toppling over on its side. Ice and water and plastic containers spilled out onto the parking lot. Me too, I said. Then I climbed in the back seat of the car and waited for Mama to come back. It was way past dark when I had heard Mama's shoes click clacking on the asphalt as she made her way toward the car. I sat up and looked out the window. Even in the dim glow of the streetlights, I could see her tired, sad look. Part of me wanted to stay put and just go back to sleep and leave her be. But another part of me wanted to get out and have my say, which is what I did. Mama jumped when I opened the car door. What in the world are you doing awake, Georgina? She said, I hate this, I said, and I don't want to do this anymore. I pushed the car door shut softly so Toby wouldn't wake up. Then I turned back to Mama and said, you've got to do something. You've got to find us a place to live, a real place, not a car. Mama reached out like she was going to touch me, so I jerked away. She dropped her hand to her side like it was heavy as cement. Then she let out a whoosh of breath that blew her hair up off her forehead. I'm trying, she said. How are you trying? She tossed her purse through the car window in the front seat. I just am. Okay, Georgina? But how? I'm working two jobs. What else do you want me to do? Find us a place to live. I stomped away from her and then rolled around back. This is all your fault. She stormed over to me and grabbed me by the shoulders. It takes money to get a place. She gave me a little shake when she said the word money. I'm trying to save up, okay? She said. She let go of me and leaned against the car. How much money do we need? I said. She looked up at the sky like the answer was written up there in the stars. Then she shook her head real slow and said, I don't know, Georgina. A lot, okay? Like, how much? More than we got. We both just stood there in the dark and listened to the crickets from the vacant lot next door. Mama draped her arm around my shoulder and I laid my head against her wanting to be a baby again, a baby that just cries and then gets taken care of, and that's all there is to a day. Finally, I asked her the same question I've asked her about a million times already. Why did Daddy leave? I felt her whole body go limp. I wish I knew. She brushed my hair off my eyes. Just got tired of it all, I reckon, she said. Tired of what? The silence between us felt big and dark, like a wall. Then I asked her the question that had been burning a hole in my heart. Tired of me? 
Mama took my chin in her hand and looked at me hard. This is not your fault, okay? She peered inside the car at Toby, all curled up in a ball in the back seat. We got to go, she said. Where? I don't know, just somewhere else. The car door creaked when she opened it, sending an echo into the still night air. We've been here for two nights now, she said. The cops are liable to run us off if we don't leave. She shot me a look when I, she saw the overturned cooler, so I helped her gather things up before I climbed back in the car. As we drove out of the parking lot, I slouched down and stared glumly out the window. The empty shops we passed made Darby, North Carolina seem like a ghost town, all locked up and dark. Mama pulled the car into the alley besides Bill Auto Parts. When she shut the engine off, we got swallowed up in quiet. I draped the beach towel over the clothesline that Mama had strung along the, strung, strung along the middle of the car to make me a bedroom. I could picture Luann, snuggled in her pink and white quilt with her stuffed animals lined up against the wall of her bed beside her, and her gymnastics ribbons taped on her headboard, and I sure felt sorry for myself. Then I curled up on the seat, turning every which way, trying to get comfortable. Finally, I settled on my back with my feet propped against the car door and stared out at the starry sky. And then I saw it, a sign tacked up there on a telephone pole right outside the car window, a faded old sign that said, reward, $500. And under that was a picture of a bug-eyed little dog with its tongue hanging out. And then under that, it said, have you seen me? My name is Misty. $500? Who in the world would pay $500 for that little old dog? Mama, I whispered through my beach towel wall. Mama rustled some in the front seat. Would $500 be enough money to get us a place to live? I said. Mama sighed. I suppose so, Georgina. Now, go to sleep. You got school tomorrow. I looked up at Mitz Miss Mitzi and my mind started churning. What if I could find that dog? I could get that money and we could have a real place to live instead of this stinking old car. But that dog could be anywhere. I wouldn't even know where to look. Besides, that sign was old. Somebody had probably already found Mitzi and gotten that $500. I stared out the window at the sign, thinking about Mitzi and wondering if there were other folks out there who would pay money for their lost dogs. And that's when I got a thought that made me sit up so fast Toby mumbles in his, mumbled in his sleep and Mama hissed, shh. I folded my legs up and lay back down in my beach towel bedroom. The damp car seat smelled greasy like french fries and bug spray. I closed my eyes and smiled to myself. I had a plan. I was going to steal me a dog. So that was the first chapter of our book. And when I was reading that first chapter, I saw some similarities to another book that we've read this year. So I'm going to give you a minute to think about what book this kind of reminds you of. So when I was hearing the part about her lying about where she lived to her friend, I instantly thought about the book that we read, Front Desk, when she lied to her friend about not living at the motel and then her friend caught her in the lie. So that's one similarity that I saw between this book and Front Desk. And another common idea in the um, How to Steal a Dog and Front Desk was both of the daughters trying to help their parents make life better and the living situation better. So as we continue to read this book, we'll look for other commonalities between how to steal a dog, maybe front desk, and fish in a tree. Thanks for watching.